33 days. She shall touch no hallowed thing, nor come into the sanctuary, until the days of her purifying be fulfilled. But if she bear a female child, then she shall be unclean for two weeks. Two weeks. Not one week like that of a child, male child. If it's a female child, it's two weeks. Two weeks. I wonder how this, how can we prove this medically? I, I wonder if medically this has any meaning to it. Let me continue. As in her separation, and she shall continue in the blood of her purifying 66 days. Again, her uh, uh, menses or her blood purification is now 66 days, not 33 days as it is with the male. Let us compare all of this to what Islam says about women's periods. Let us look at Noble Verse chapter 2 verses 222. They ask thee concerning women's courses. Say they are hurt. Ada in Arabic. Ada literally means hurt. It's pain. So keep away from women in their courses and do not approach them until they are clean. But when they have purified themselves, you may approach them in any manner, time or place ordained for you by God. For God loves those who turn to him constantly and he loves those who keep themselves pure and clean. Let us look at what the Prophet, peace be upon him, said regarding women's menses. This is from Sahih Muslim, um, book number 3, narration number 579. Maimuna, the wife of the Prophet, peace be upon him, reported, The Messenger of Allah, may peace be upon him, contacted and embraced his wives over the waist wrapper when they were menstruating, when they were having their monthly periods, in other words. Also, Aisha reported in Sahih Muslim, uh, book number 3, uh, narration number 591, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, would recline in my lap when I was ministrating and recite the Quran. Also, Aisha reported in Sahih Muslim, book number 3, narration number 577, when, among, uh, when anyone among us, among the wives of the Prophet, peace be upon, uh, peace be upon him, menstruating, the Messenger of Allah asked her to tie a waist wrapper over her body and then embraced her. So as we clearly see, ladies and gentlemen and brothers and sisters in Islam, the Bible's view on women is that women are dirt and women are defiling to men. And the opposite is not true. Men are not defiling to women. Men are not dirt. It is only the women who are dirt. They're the scum of the earth. They're defiling. They would even cause men to not go to heaven. We, I understand Eve caused Adam to, uh, both of them get expelled from heaven, but for the Bible to say that women are the scum of the earth, they are dirt, they cause double the pollution when they're born, uh, and when they're during their menses, everything they touch, everything that comes in contact with them, everything that even smells them, gets defiled and needs to be either thrown away or washed or destroyed. All of this proves that the Bible is a sexist and racist book when it comes to women and also non-Jews, which other verses clearly show and demonstrate that every non-Jew is the filth of the earth, which I'm not going to get into that right now. But on the other hand, Islam treats women neutrally. It treats them with respect. When a woman is on, in, during her menses, she, her husband is forbidden upon her. And when she's clean, they can then resume having a natural sexual relationship. But even during her menses, even during her monthly period, she's not a defiling scum of the earth. She is a human being. The Prophet, peace be upon him, used to embrace his, wa his wives when they were during 
their menses. They were not causing pollutions. They were not defiling to whatever they touch. They were unclean. Their blood was unclean. They were forbidden for sex. But they were not defiling objects. And certainly, if a woman is born, there is no medical proof or discovery that says or can justify why the birth of girls causes double the pollution that of boys in the Bible. Medi medicine does not, cannot prove this. Medically, this is a false statement and it is only a sexist statement. It is a racist statement. I wonder how Sam Shimon will answer this. Also, let us look at voodoo and superstition in the Bible to further prove that Sam Shimon's points are absurd at best because he is using the Jewish law to nullify Islam, which is incorrect. Let us look at Leviticus chapter 14 verses 49 through 53. To purify the house, he is to take two birds and some cedar wood, scarlet yarn and um, hyssop, H-Y-S-S-O-P. I don't know how you pronounce that. He shall kill one of the birds over fresh water and in a clay pot. Then he is to take the cedar wood and uh, the cedar wood, the uh, hyssop, the scarlet yarn, and the live bird, dip them into the blood of the dead bird and the fresh water and sprinkle the house seven times. He shall purify the house with the bird's blood, the fresh water, the live bird, the cedar wood, the hyssop, and the scarlet yarn. Then he is to release the live bird in the open fields outside the town. In this way, he will make atonement for the house and it will be clean. Now, since Muslims do not practice this, Mr. Shamon, are you telling me and telling your listeners that Islam is false because we do not use voodoo in our practice? I wonder how you're going to answer this. Also, to end this refutation, I'd like to ask Mr. Shamon about Jesus himself, Jesus, his God, according to him, when he wore women's clothes. Mr. Shamon, was not Jesus a violator to the law of Moses, according to you, when his mother, after she gave, she gave birth to him, wrapped him in her own garment as an infant baby when he was wrapped in garment obviously that was his mother's garment right it was not it, it was her quote clothes end quote and when she wrapped him in those clothes baby jesus did he not violate his own laws assuming that he is your creator i mean we're not talking about uh, any an ordinary baby here we're talking about God Almighty, according to your false beliefs of Trinity, we're talking about God Himself coming to this earth and wearing a woman's garment, violating His own laws. What's your say about this, Mr. Shamon? When Jesus was wrapped and when Jesus wore His mother's garment during His childhood. And also, what about Mary herself? Okay, let's say that Sam Shimon will escape this and give a foolish answer such as, Oh, well, God was a baby. The creator of, of this universe was a baby. He was a helpless baby, so he had no choice. Okay, I will give you this absurd point, an absurd answer, Mr. Shimon. What about his mother, the Jewish righteous virgin Mary? Peace be upon her. Did she not violate the law of God when she wrapped her son in her clothes and her garment her male 
son knowing that he is a special son because she was not touched by any man when she gave birth to Jesus baby Jesus so and nowhere in your Bible does it say that she brought men's garments to wrap Jesus with what what we read in the Bible mr. Shimon is that Mary went away when she got pregnant and isolated herself from the world until she gave birth to Jesus baby Jesus so she took her clothes with with her and went live in an isolated life until Jesus was born so obviously she wrapped him in her own clothes he wore her own garments I wonder what's your say about this mr. Sam Shamon with this brothers and sisters and ladies and gentlemen